Hi, I'm Tyler, and you might recognize me from real estate game in life. So I feel like I'm way late to talking about a trend that I honestly kind of helped start. But now that I have an audience on YouTube, this is something that I really wanted to talk about on my own platform. So I am so excited to do this while I make almond amaretto cookies. Let me know if I didn't say that right. I don't know. I don't know. One egg white. Okay. Three tablespoons is one egg white. Probably. So I'm just gonna start out by explaining to you what an almond mom even is. Basically, I would define an almond mom as a person, I think it could be any gender, who enforces strict diet culture or harsh beliefs about bodies onto other people, specifically their children. So this term kind of came around on TikTok in summer of 2022 when this clip of Gigi Hadid telling her mom Yolanda Hadid that she was like basically amazing and felt really sick. And then Yolanda Hadid's like, I have a couple of almonds. Chew them really well because your, your stomach is yeah, not. Yeah. 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 Okay, love you. Yolanda Hadid blows up for this clip of being like a diet culture vulture, so crazy and intense. And people take that almond clip. Almond mom and then people start labeling behaviors as almond mom behaviors so i saw clips that were like on tiktok of like here's what's in my almond mom pantry here's what my almond mom orders for dinner i have an almond roommate and this is what she's eating for breakfast so i saw little vignettes of this trend this was before sorry my throat was like <coughs> i feel like i'm dying hi guys i want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video parade <laughs> Parade is Gen Z's favorite clothing brand because their intimates and loungewear are inclusive and sustainably made. So I got the Invisible Sculpt Hip Hucker Undies in black and they are a new staple in my wardrobe. I love that they're seamless because that means you won't get a quad butt if you know you know. They also just literally fit perfectly and they have a little bit of compression at the top which I love because I know that I'm not gonna get a wedgie and my undies are gonna stay in place all day long. So if it's time to update your undies, then do your a favor and go to yourparade.com and use code Tyler50 for 50% 50 off your order. Maybe I just need to chew an almond really well. So I started seeing this trend circulating and this was before I had a platform on TikTok, but I was just goofing around with my friends in a grocery store and I was like, oh my gosh, film me talking about the protein bars because this is something that my mom would do, but my mom is an almond mom, so I'm gonna hop in on this trend. And I was like, I am starving, let's get stocked up. If you're putting ranch dressing on your salad, you may as well have had a grilled cheese for lunch. I could never do sugar like this. It just makes my teeth hurt. Thought I was being silly and it blows up. And all the comments are people being like, this is exactly like grocery shopping with my mom. How did you walk around recording my mom? This is crazy. And I was like, other people experience this? What do you mean? This pops off and I just continue doing it because one, it was really fun and it was honestly a little bit healing for me and people just kept wanting more. So I quickly became synonymous with this trend. I went on ABC, Good Morning America, NBC, Teen Vogue and probably some other ones talking about this trend like over and over again for a year. And it kind of gave me a platform on TikTok, which I'm so grateful because I just watched it build a really great community for a lot of people in the comments of just being like, I've been there, I see you, I know you, this, let's get through this together. And there's something really special about that. So I think the work that we've started to do in the Almond Mom community is actually really empowering and helpful. Some of the classic things that I would talk about in my Almond Mom videos were just impressions of toxic diet culture being like, did you log that into my fitness pal? You know what? You've been through the trenches if you know what my fitness pal is. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry if you know what that app is. Oh, is it one and a quarter cup or did I read it wrong? Oh no, it's a quarter cup. Damn it. I suck at cooking. Oh, this has a marking though. So I'll just go with, that's probably close enough. Another disgusting classic is a moment on the lips, a life on the hips. Now, nobody ever said that to me, but I had so so many comments of people saying they remember their elders saying it to them that I had to start including that. Like that's disgusting. That's a crazy thing to say to somebody. Or just complaining about your body, complaining about going up a size, wanting to get in your best shape for summer, talking about your diet plan openly, freaking out about what your kids are eating, not having snacks in the house, having weird eating windows. All these things are little bits that I would insert into the videos that really were unfortunately relatable to people. 
simple and sparked a lot of conversation. Next, we need one cup of almond meal. Okay. So I think getting into this video, one thing that's so important to understand is that the guilty party here is not our family members, it's not our grandmas, it's not our aunts, it's not our moms. It's the diet industry. This says the global weight loss and weight management market was valued at approximately 189.8 billion in 2020 and is projected to reach over 269.4 billion by 2027. Can you believe that? And this was written in 2020, thank you ChatGPT, before they knew about that Ozempi. So it's probably even bigger. Americans spend an estimated 72 billion annually on weight loss products and services. You also have to realize that most people's almond moms grew up in the 80s and 90s before mainstream feminism and before it the body positivity movement. So they still had diet culture like we have now, but they didn't have the counter culture to, you know, kind of fall back on. Like even my mom was telling me that she was like, I wonder what my life would have been like if I felt like my only option wasn't just to be a mom. I was like, holy shit, you really thought your only option was to be a mom? That's like crazy because my sisters and I are all like super empowered, want to, we'll do whatever we want. And we literally feel like we don't have to ask for that. And I feel like we take that for granted how important empowered and strong we are because that wasn't always the norm. Sift the icing sugar, then almond flour. Okay, well, let's see if I can still make it happen. Oh no, I think I've lost. Yeah, the egg whites were supposed to be frothy, damn it. Okay, it's making a paste. Okay, if it's teaspoons, I'm sorry, but I will not be measuring teaspoon measurements. That seems so inconsequential that it doesn't even make sense to measure it, no offense. Okay, we need baking powder, half teaspoon. Throw that in there, a little bit of salt. You guys are gonna be so mad if you know how to cook. A lot of the skits that I've done are totally based off moments from my own life. I grew up overweight. <laughs> And totally obsessed with sugar. I still am, but I think hopefully a little less obsessively than when I was a kid. Not only did I have an almond mom, but like I had a super obsessive compulsion with all things junk food. So it was like double trouble, you know? So I have the best stories because I would like do things like go to my friend's house just to eat their Halloween candy. Like I would invent games. If I knew my friends had leftover candy from a holiday, I would invent a game where it's like, oh my gosh, let's play like shopping, except we barter with candy or like oh my gosh whoever wins gets like three pieces of candy and so I would like invent games just to get candy like it's so embarrassing <laughs> both my parents really got into CrossFit when I was in like fifth grade so I remember I had to start going to CrossFit and I hated that I had a little chubby friend and we went together it just kind of sucked because we knew we were there just because we were overweight not because like our parents wanted us to do it or like they were passionate about it like we totally knew why we were there and we did not want to be there every single time it was awful and me and this girl did a triathlon together too like <laughs> what fifth grader wants to be doing a triathlon in CrossFit like I'm sure there are some that do but we were not the ones and sometimes if we were really good we'd get rewarded with a trip to Subway afterward. Yep, and there were certain things that we could and couldn't get at Subway. If there were an option to not get bread, we would have had the option. Miraculously, we were allowed to have bread for some reason. I need vanilla. Not gonna measure this either. This made like no batter, I'm so confused. And like, don't get me wrong, we were still pretty normal. Like once a week, we could have like a cheap meal, like where we went to a restaurant or got pizza. And honestly, still, I have that kind of behavior. Like if it's a Friday night and there's not a Domino's pizza in front of me, I like start tweaking, I hate it. Like on holidays, we were allowed to celebrate. And if there was stuff at school, like my mom wasn't gonna be caring about it, you know? I would say we had like a pretty normal childhood. This isn't like an expose or anything crazy like that, you know? I just wanna like talk about it honestly. And honestly, my dad had like really sweet tooth behaviors like me. And so sometimes he would make like a Betty Crocker. He would go to Smith's, Smith's Marketplace, come home with a Betty Crocker brownie mix. And I knew this was like the best night of the week. I was like, dad, you're the freaking best, yes. But at the same time, I would remember going to lunch and everybody else would have like a cosmic brownie or like mom made cookies last night. So I get to take some with me to lunch in my lunchbox or like a fun little gusher or a Lunchable or something like that. And I would have like a yogurt and a protein bar or like an apple and a string cheese or something boring like that and I would be like sir may I have a chip please can I have a little corner of your brownie for 
for a tuppins, please? I would be like Oliver begging at the food line, like so cringeworthy. And my friends, I'm sure were so annoyed at it. But like, I never had good snacks in my lunch. And that was one thing I always remembered. I remember one time I was like in front of my grandma and my mom and complaining. I was like, yeah, all I got was like a peanut butter and jelly and a bag of blueberries. It sucks. And my grandma goes, <laughs> this is my mom's mom, so it makes sense. She's like, well, the jelly is a treat. So there you go. <laughs> Which is kind of true. Like jelly is not healthy for you. It has lots of sugars, sometimes red dye add-ins. So she was onto something. Almond Mom is a very fine line about like what's a healthy lifestyle and what's excessive restriction. Stir until forms a firm paste. Divide the cookie dough into eight pieces. Flour your hands to make the rolling and pressing easier. Roll into small balls and press slightly to flatten. And we need to preheat to 180 degrees. 180. I also remember friends coming over and being like, do you have snacks? And being like, probably not. Like air pop popcorn, struggle nachos, and like maybe in the summer if we were lucky, sugar-free popsicles. <laughs> I need flour. Oh, this is sugar. Oh, I hate cooking. That's how much it takes for me to quit. I remember one time we got cookie dough with our pizza from Papa Murphy's. Why did I do that? That was like barbaric. Cut that out. I literally, I started, I cracked open the seal and I started stealing it. And then I realized I was too deep of stealing it that I was gonna get in trouble if anyone realized that I was stealing it. So I had to take it into the bathroom and I started like binge eating all the cookie dough. And then I heard people coming in the house. So I hurried and shoved it under the sink in the bathroom and hid it there. But then I was like, it would like call for me in the night and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I forgot I have cookie dough under the sink in the bathroom. <laughs> So I would go obsessively like a total fiend in the night. It was a large sum of bathroom cookie dough. So I would go again and again and again. Isn't that crazy? Like this was my thing. I was secretly hoarding raw cookie dough in the bathroom for like a month. Like one time my mom bought fruit snacks and I ate the whole entire thing. So like, I mean, how do you control a child who's doing that? I don't know. But it was just such funny polarity because then at the same time I have a mom who's like a CrossFit coach, certified yoga teacher, a certified boxing coach, like all of these things and an ER nurse. And and she's watching this being like, what do I do? <laughs> like, how do you even deal with this? I don't know. Oh, if we went out to dinner and anybody in my family tried to order a soda, my mom would be like, you'll have water. It would be like, ooh, I want to Sprite water for the table. But I think this was problematic for me because like, you know, you hear your mom say something or somebody in your family say something like, oh my gosh, I'm up to size whatever and I feel so fat and ugly, you know? And then you carry that with you and then maybe one day you get to be the forbidden size and you're like, uh-oh, what's wrong with me? I gotta fix this, this is like problematic. You pick up all these little things from all the adults in your life that are saying like things that they mean innocently or they're like, I only eat one bite of each food on my plate to make sure I stay skinny. Or maybe you have a parent who's like doing a carb-free diet for like a month, but as a child you've processed that as like, oh no, I can never eat carbs. Or you have a parent that's like counting calories and that sticks with you because you're like, oh, I need to be counting calories. And then, you know, that follows you in your life. Or somebody says, oh, bagels are like really bad for you. They make you fat and then you're like oh so I can't eat bagels and being fat is bad that's what I learned from this conversation okay I'll be sure not to do that or watching TV and your dad goes wow I didn't know they cast fat actresses anymore and the actress is like pretty normal sized and you grow up to be so insecure about being you know like a size medium because your dad one time said a girl on TV looks fat it's just those little things that nobody means harmfully but they stick with you and especially when you have like a more intense version of this, an almond mom, it can be really hard. I remember back to school shopping was always so sad because my mom had like a perfect body and I was overweight. And so trying to shop for jeans that at the time were low-waisted, it was like mid early 2000s shopping for low-waisted jeans as a girl who's a plus size at Justice and my mom has a perfect body, we can share clothes and it was always so sad to me. And those things just kind of stick with you. It's hard to do this video in a lighthearted way because this topic is like so heavy to me, but um, I wanted to somewhat lightheartedly take this on. Also, uh, my cooking looks awful. I don't know if you can see, but this is like a literal disaster. It's just more on my fingers than anywhere. I have two good cookies and two just mistakes. I think I'm gonna combine this into one cookie so I have three acceptable cookies. Oh no, it's a sticky mess. Oh no. 
I don't know what to do now. More flour maybe? Ah. This is why I don't cook. And I don't even wanna deal with the remaining cookie dough because like, I don't think it's gonna be good enough to justify making more and it's just making a mess. Let me taste the dough. Mmm, that's good. It's like a very neutral plain flavor, but like good at the same time. Also, if you guys wanna see some footage of my actual mom, um, we did do some interviews and you can go check them out. She's been like really generous with her time and like being open about our experience. And I feel like we've been able to move through it together and we're totally good now. And I think her coming out with me about our experience as a mother and daughter dealing with diet culture together has helped so many people. And so I'm just like so proud of her. And I think she's so cool for coming out with that because like it was so uncomfortable to have like all of ABC in our living room. Like it was crazy. And they were asking us like really hard questions and it was emotional and was uncomfortable, but I'm glad we did it. And I'm so grateful that like, she is somebody who's not public, decided to come out and do that with me. It's like so supportive and nice. Like I can't thank her enough. I just thought of, um, we went to the doctor and I remember the doctor left the room after I got weighed and I saw on the chart that I was like overweight. And that was the first time I like actually saw it. And I was like, uh oh, I like knew it, but I like wasn't willing to accept it. Like kids called me fat on the playground. Like I got bullied for it. But then when you actually see it, like in a doctor's office on the thing, I was like, fuck, I'm actually overweight. This sucks. <laughs> And I was like, mom, am I overweight? I can't remember what she said, but I just like remember that jarring moment. The doctor didn't really address it. All the doctor was like, I just remember him being like, all right, we need to get you involved in a hobby that like gets you physically moving. So that year I ended up doing like swim team and I was so bad at it, by the way. It was just like lap swimming for like two hours a day or something. It was awful. I would never want to do that again. Having your hair wet with chlorine, like it's just like aimlessly going through the lanes. I don't know how people People get into that as like a passion, no offense. So I'm just pressing these almond slivers into the cookies because I already know that this isn't gonna work. So I'm kind of throwing the towel in on this. This is like swimming to me, is like making these cookies. It's just like stupid and pointless. Like why swim if you're not gonna get anywhere? Like, oh, stationary bike. Just kidding. I don't know. I think that's a Theo Vaughn clip where he makes fun of stationary bikes and it's not funny. What do they sell? Fucking bikes? The stationary bikes? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Peloton sells stationary bikes. And they got a problem of Robert fucking Kennedy. Yeah, and what's lamer than watching your husband get on a bike that doesn't go anywhere, huh? I'm just flipping these cookies over and putting more, sprinkling it on top, and then pressing it in with my hand. Pat, pat, pat. And then flipping it over like a little tortilla, and then sprinkling more on top. <laughs> and then pressing it in with my little grubby hands. How cute is that, guys? Mmm, who's excited to try Tyler's almond pressed cookies? So anyway, I started doing swim team, and I started losing weight like actually crazy. Even in spite of sometimes to bribe me to go, my dad would secretly buy me a Reese's, which is so counterproductive. Um, <laughs> but that's how he would bribe me to go. I also remember one time I went to a swim meet like way too early and everybody just started swimming on top of me during the warm up because I was so slow. <laughs> And then after that me, I was like, I'm done with swimming. But I ended up losing tons of weight doing it. And like everybody in our neighborhood loved to come up to me randomly at like church and at school. Oh my gosh, you look so skinny. Did you lose weight? And I'm like 11 and 12 at this point. And I'm like feeling hyped up. Like it made me feel good. But it kind of gave me a bad complex about losing weight. Quit swim team, gained a little bit back. Went to junior high, seventh grade and got like a super unhealthy complex about losing weight because I feel like I got into seventh grade and I was like stressed about being at a new school with new people and all these girls, the ninth grade girls were getting into their woman bodies and they were like so pretty. These weren't kids, these were more like teenagers and they were cool and they were thin and they had good clothes. I like so wanted to be that and my friend who was chubby with me and did the triathlons recently lost a ton of weight and everybody kept telling me about it and I was like, okay, I get it, she lost the weight, stop telling me about it. So it ended up I lost like I think 15 to 20 pounds in like my first semester of seventh grade. And I got so obsessive with it to the point where I was like in my fitness pal as a 12 year old, logging every single thing I ate that day. I was like, I would come home from school and I would just like lay on the floor until it was time for bed. Cause I had no energy to do anything. Cause I was like, starving myself like crazy. I just like was in the trenches of facing like really crazy disordered eating habits. Pause from the drama because I'm showing you my beautiful cookies that are ready to go in the oven. Um, if you're following along, don't. 
So I wish I had a better solution to this, but honestly, I was really involved with my extracurriculars and with my academics. And I realized that I was totally falling behind in everything. I was sucking at it and it was because I was starving myself. So kind of in my own way, I slowly started feeding myself again and overcoming these issues like in my own mind. I feel like I dealt with that through many years after that, just kind of on and off having like bad mindsets and good mindsets, which I think probably most women can relate to. But I think my real aha moment was when I got an internship at a boutique in college and basically the boutique was ran by this lady in like her late 50s with like a really rich husband and all the employees were just her other bored old rich lady friends and they would come into work and literally just complain about the stupidest things all day. Like all they cared about was that they're getting cellulite and they're getting fat and they feel ugly and they are on a new diet and then they're hungry and then they stopped a new diet. And I was like so sick and tired of hearing it because I realized like how annoying it is to listen to somebody when all they have to talk about is their body or their diet. Seriously, I just thought like maybe once you're like 30, you get enough like sense to stop being obsessed with diet culture. I thought my mom maybe was like an anomaly. And then I was around these women and I was like, damn, my mom's actually pretty normal compared to these ladies. What do you mean? If women in their 50s are still obsessed about how much they can shrink themselves and it like never changes, then I better figure something out because this is like so depressing to listen to women 50, 60, 70, where all they care about is their bone broth diet. Please, by the way, bone broth is so stinky. I literally was like in a cubicle next to me, I would hear like <laughs> and then smell like the smell of literal farts because this lady was drinking bone broth. It was so gross. So that was kind of a breakthrough moment for me to just like not care as much. So I feel like I finally kind of found like a good spot where I'm pretty indulgent <laughs> foods that I want, but I just kind of focus on like eating protein, adding in, like I take greens, which a lot of people will say is like diet culture. I think wanting to be healthy and take care of your body is not diet culture. Let's not go over board here because I'm not going to eat a vegetable. So fuck you. I'm going to take my greens. Okay. I try to drink water when I can, but like, I don't stress about it. Like the difference from where I'm at now versus 10 pounds skinnier is the difference of like a lot of fucking work. And I'm just not willing to put myself under that mental anguish to get there. You know, I could lose five pounds, but I could also lose my sense of humanity. So what do we do about this almond mom situation and culture? I actually think it's going away because I think my generation understands that we have a lot more to offer than just being skinny and having big boobs, you know, but I think the best thing we can do is to be very mindful about what we say in front of young people. So I have a little sister and I just constantly think about what I'm saying in front of her because I've definitely slipped up before and been like, I feel so fat today. Or if I don't fit into this dress, I'm going to be X, Y, Z. You know, I really try not to say stuff like that. I've actually seen a counterculture though on TikTok where they're called snack moms, where it's like kind of like Dr. D dozen mom, where she's like, I have a pantry full of anything you could think of. My kids have 20 muffins for breakfast, 30 gushers for a snack, McDonald's for lunch, pizza for second second snack and we had a spaghetti bar for dinner. Now that to me is a little bit too far in the opposite direction. Like, let me read you the statistic. In 2016, the number of overweight children under the age of five was estimated to be over 41 million globally. The prevalence of overweight, including obesity, was 34.5% among children two to 19 years old. And this is problematic because childhood obesity is linked to cardiovascular issues, diabetes, self-confidence issues, mental health, and so much more. That I think to go the opposite direction where we on purpose encourage unhealthy lifestyles is problematic just as much. Let's check on our nasty cookies. Oh, those are not ready, okay. In fact, there was actually a YouTuber who criticized me saying that my Almond Mom videos are actually promoting unhealthy lifestyles instead of taking down a different kind of unhealthy lifestyle. And it pissed me off so bad because she basically watched my videos and was like, oh, so you think kids should have unlimited access to pizza rolls and they should have them every day? It's just so frustrating because I've put so much work into taking down diet culture that for you to say that I'm doing the opposite is just like, agitating, you know? Also, a lot of those videos are more tame examples. Like, I'm not going to go into detail because it's triggering for me and you of like a child logging a salad into MyFitnessPal and measuring out salad dressing. Because guess what? Nobody wants to see that. That's upsetting and sad. So I'm gonna do a more tame example of like going to a friend's house and being shocked that I can have as many pizza rolls as I want. Because to me, that's like, 
a tame portrayal and scratching at a bigger issue. And then if you want to get into the issue and bring it to your mom and talk about like, oh, this was relatable to me because X, Y, Z and get into the deeper conversation there, I feel like that's for you to do, but not for me to do because that's uncomfortable. Anyway, we live in so much polarity right now because I feel like almond mom is not the right choice to force body image and diet culture and obsessive orthorexia onto your children is not good. But at the same time, I think we need to teach our kids healthy lifestyles. We need to teach them to be involved in some sort of activity, to understand that fruits and vegetables are good for them and that sugar is for fun, but it's not for all the time. I mean, even now I don't know how to enjoy sugar in like a moderate way. So somebody with answers should figure that out. But I just think it's important to note that we are doing work to get over almond moms. There are so many good resources that I will link in the description below. And you should just know that there is so much more to you than how skinny you can be. You should really take time to invest in your passions and talents and aspirations. And I just really hope that none of them have anything to do with what you look like. <laughs> we should just like work on the way we talk to ourselves each and every day and have more positive things to say about ourselves and each other. Um, <laughs> this doesn't look great. Let me show you what our situation is. Um, they're so covered in flour that it was really hard to see when they were getting golden brown. Um, and then this one was just the victim and I kept slicing into it to check how hard the cookies were getting. So really we walked away from this experiment with two edible cookies. <laughs> A close up. Why would anyone ever eat this? This has no flavor. This is like eating a sandbar. Subscribe to my channel, please. Bye.